Welcome to this module on greasing Mueller valves. Today's objectives are to show you how to safely and effectively repair most leaks that occur with Mueller valves. Before we begin, let's cover some safety items. There are AOCs associated with greasing Mueller valves. Inspect the valve for damage prior to greasing it. If the valve is in disrepair or it has been tampered with, it could come apart, exposing you to flying debris. Consider the Celastic if you have a copper loop or riser. Look to see that it's tight. It should be iron bound. In some cases, greasing the valve will not fix the problem. The leak should be properly graded and set up for repairs. In other cases, operating the valve incorrectly could leave the customer without gas. The minimum PPE you should be wearing is gloves and safety glasses and or goggles. The following are the components of the Mueller valve. You have the body of the valve. You have the key or operator. There are O-rings which affect the seal and a lubrication port. There is a blind pin and washer. So when do you grease a valve? Anytime the key is hard to turn or if gas is leaking either from the core itself or leaking through the core of the valve and causing a bypass situation. It is not recommended that you grease a valve if you do not have access to the customer's home between October 15th and April 15th. If the cold weather rule is in effect, it's best not to risk shutting the customer off or interrupting service. If the valve is broken or missing components, you should set it up for repairs, graded appropriately. Remember, grading is only for leaks. If it's not leaking, create a repair order within a reasonable time frame. If the copper riser or loop is leaking, it's best not to disturb the seal by attempting to grease the valve. Grade it appropriately and set up a repair order. Now that our housekeeping is out of the way, here's some tools you'll need. A flexible hose for your grease gun, adjustable wrenches, a quarter inch Allen key, the Mueller grease tool, it is a skewed item, Mueller grease, and eighth inch pipe elbows. The following video will show you how to properly grease Mueller valves. Today we're going to grease a Mueller valve. Some things I want you to keep in mind before you get started. Safety is one of them. Wear the proper PPE. You should wear gloves and you should wear safety glasses or goggles to protect your eyes from flying debris associated with blowing gas. If something goes wrong with that valve, uh, it could actually come apart. So. Be prepared, be thinking about uh, plan B if you're going to go ahead and, and grease one of these valves. Now what I'd like to do is show you the anatomy of the valve. You have an operator right over here uh, with wing locks on it. You should inspect the valve for damage uh, prior to going ahead and working on it. If any of this stuff is broken, we should probably be considering setting it up for uh, street department to come out and replace the valve anyway. These have a tendency to leak. They can leak through the seal on, on either side or they can leak through the actual core itself, allowing a bypass into the house once we've shut it off. Greasing it in either case will take care of that. There's a uh, quarter inch hex plug right here that you can remove and that's where you can add the grease. If you look closely Right here you can see this black dot, there's actually a pin right there. And that pin is locking this particular component to the, the core of the valve itself. 
Now we've loosened up this jam nut on the back and yeah, they can, they can come off, but what's nice about having that pin in place is that the valve will not blow apart on you. One thing you don't ever want to do is to try to turn this section of the valve in any way. You could break that pin and the whole core could pop out of there. Also, anytime that you're going to make an adjustment to this valve, some people will just come along and they'll go ahead and they'll say, you know what, it's leaking, I'm just going to go ahead and tighten it. You can see it's actually operating the valve. You're going to want to have two wrenches with you so you can hold the valve in place while you tighten up the core. You only need to snug it up. Again, this pin will keep it from flying out, but it's also going to keep it from getting over tightened. That can be another problem if the valve's hard to turn. You can loosen this up slightly, get the valve moving again, and then snug it back up. Alright, so here's the tools you're going to need to grease a valve. Uh, you're going to need a couple of crescent wrenches. We don't want to use pipe wrenches, you want to use crescent wrenches, the right tool for the right job. You may need quarter inch Allen wrench, um, that's a possibility. And I like to have a eighth inch pipe nipples and some elbows handy. Uh, they've already been pre-filled with grease and I'll show you a little bit later why I like to have these. This is the grease that goes in there. It's called ground key valve grease and it's a product by Mueller and it's the only kind of grease that we should be using in the grease guns. Now these grease guns are special and they can be a little bit bulky in some cases. That's where the, the nipples and elbows come into play. It has its own quarter inch Allen wrench built into the tool and you can just go ahead and, and spin it and grease will come out of the end. When uh, you want to refill it, it's pretty easy to refill. You can just loosen the cap up, take it all the way off, Pull the end out and you can insert more grease into the end as needed. Go ahead and screw it all back together and you're ready to grease a valve. What a lot of guys do in the winter time, they'll leave this on the dashboard in the box and uh, that keeps the, the grease warm and it'll make it easier to go ahead and grease a valve in the middle of the winter. So after you've inspected the valve for any damage, you can go ahead and locate the hex key uh, and remove it using an Allen wrench or actually on the tool itself, there's an Allen wrench as well. You may find like this one where it's really hard to get in there that you may have to use a standard Allen wrench in order to remove it. And it doesn't give you a whole lot of opportunity here to, to get a good full turn on it. These can be full of paint, they can be kind of hidden, they can be full of dirt and stuff too. So you may have to dig it out of there with a pick. And then you can go ahead and you can remove the plug and get it loose. You can probably get it going with your fingers. Don't be alarmed if you uh, remove this and a little gas starts escaping from here. Sometimes when these things need grease, gas will actually come out of this, this port once you've gone and removed the hex. These 8 inch pipe el elbows I talked about earlier can help you in these situations where the, the actual grease port is up against the meter or up against the house. So you can go ahead and you can screw these in. Uh, you'll be able to at least get your grease gun in there at this point. They don't have to be super tight, but you should just go ahead and snug them up. And I'm going to continue to build myself a little bit of a bypass here. So you can see, just going to build myself a little bypass out of these uh, pipe nipples and elbows. They're all eighth inch and they're all preloaded with grease. And now I can actually get my grease gun in here to go ahead and grease this valve. 
When you approach the meter set, one of the first things that you want to do is you want to go ahead and check out the meter dial and see if it's spinning. You want to spot it if it's actually spinning and appliance is on, and you're not going to want to operate that valve while an appliance is on. If the dials are spinning, that means an appliance is on. You're going to want to wait until the main burner shuts off. Well, now you can see that uh, my dial stopped turning and I can go ahead and uh, grease and operate this valve at this point. When we grease these valves we want to grease them in the open position and you can see that this grease port is off to one side but both sides of this valve need grease so one of the things that we're going to do first is we're going to grease this side of the valve and we're going to exercise it and then we're going to go ahead and spin the valve and grease the other side so let me go ahead here I'll hold back slightly I'm going to add a couple of turns of grease into this and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to exercise the valve just a little bit and we'll just get it moving so we'll work some of that grease inside there alright the next step I'm going to have to remove my grease gun because I want to, in effect, spin this 180 degrees. And I want to be quick about it. So we don't have much time and we want to feed the customer off a line pack. I'm going to give my meter dial one quick last check to make sure nothing's come on. And I'm going to go ahead and spin it. Now I can grease the other side of the valve. It's important to remember to turn the valve quickly a full 180 degrees. Doing so will allow the pilots to stay lit. All right, let's recap. So we want to have the proper PPE on, right? Gloves, glasses. We want to inspect the valve prior to operating it. Before you move that valve, spot the meter and make sure the appliances aren't on or operating. Move the valve quickly and you'll be able to keep the pilots lit in the customer's home. Thank you. Have a